Hello and welcome. I'm Anjali and you're watching Z Companion and today we're talking about Ayurveda and in the studio I have Dr. Deepa Apte who is the founder of Ayurveda Pura. She's a medical doctor and now an Ayurvedic practitioner and she's been practicing Ayurveda for over 15 years. Deepa, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Thank you. I'm really excited to have you here because I love health, I love well-being and I love Ayurveda. And I'm really excited to hear what wisdom you have about many things like weight loss, mm -hmm. anti-aging, skincare, all of that. I can't wait. Yeah. But before we get into that, can you give us some way of, for, for me and for our viewers, for example, of being able to know what type they might be if they don't already? Just a few different indicators. Yeah, of course. In Ayurveda, when we look into body types, there are three main body types. The first one is called Vata body type, and it is to do with air-related movement. And you will see that just the way air moves around, such people, they like to do a lot of activities. They like to multitask. They just don't like sitting in one place. Likewise, the mind is also very active. Mm. So activity equals vata dosha or vata body type. But then once again, because air moves a lot, that means through that it may cause coldness and dryness in the body. And therefore, such people, they may have cold and dry hands and feet. So that may be another indicator that they may have a vata body type. And of course, you will see that when air moves a lot through that, there is that tendency towards increased metabolism, but mm. in a more dry form. Mm. And therefore, vata personalities are such who have this tendency towards weight loss. And now weight loss is not because their metabolism is very strong. In Ayurveda, we believe that vata people lose weight not because they are just losing weight, that's because they either forget to eat or they don't mm -hmm. have time to eat. Okay. And therefore through that weight loss is there uh, one of the signs. Mm -hmm. So that's the first one, vata body type. Pitta, now the word pitta literally means fire or heat. And therefore as we know fire is strong, it's penetrating, it's sharp. Therefore pitta personalities, they are very focused, very organized, very ambitious. The organization again equals to pitta. Mm. And of course, now because it is fire, that means through that they have this tendency towards more warm and moist hands and feet. So it's mm. like, you know, more uh, hot body mm. rather than cold. And they are the kind of people who don't like hot and humid weather, you know, mm. because they've got a little bit more fire. So that's about, you know, like physical qualities. Now, in terms of weight, they are the kind of people who will uh, tend to maintain weight. Mm. Because the fire is strong, it is believed that every time a pitta person eats food, that fire eats up all the food and is again ready for more food. Mm. And therefore, through that, you will see that such people, they will eat many times during the day, but they will not gain weight. And therefore, they tend to maintain weight. They're so, so lucky. I know. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> And of course, lastly is kapha body type, and the elements for kapha dosha are water and earth, but mainly earth. And you will see earth has a quality of being heavy, and it slows down. Likewise, such people also, they have this quality of being more patient, more stable, but that heaviness will also not allow them to move around quickly, so their mm. activities are relatively slow. Mm. And then when it comes to like, you know, hands and feet, they are the kind of people who tend to have more cold but wet, you know, mm. not more uh, dry, but, you know, cold and moist hands and feet. It's like cold and clammy feeling. Mm. It's more kapha related. Okay. And then when it comes to weight related uh, quality, they are the kind of people who will now tend to gain weight because earth is heavy, so it moves slowly. Mm. Therefore, their metabolism is also slow. And through that, of course, then they have got the quality of more weight gain. So that is, of course, a few qualities for kapha constitution. So, of course, this is just in a nutshell yes. about vata, pitta, and kapha dosha. Okay, that's nice. So that means as we talk about things, really we, you know, our viewers can get an idea of what exactly. might be applicable. So then the first thing I'd like to go to is, is weight loss. Yes. And if we want to lose weight or feel that we need to lose weight, mm -hmm. what kinds of things can we do? Okay, fine. Now, in terms uh, of weight loss, of course, now in Ayurveda, when we look into weight gain, mm -hmm. we believe that that person's what is called as digestive fire, which lives in the stomach, has become weak. Mm -hmm. And it is believed that when the digestive fire becomes weak, then toxins start forming in the body. Mm -hmm. And the best way of comparing these toxins are, let's say, a block of cheese. When you keep in the fridge, where that is where we keep cheese usually, the environment is kind of cold, damp, and heavy. And therefore, this block of cheese will always remain solid. It will never melt. But when you remove it from the fridge, 
keep it in a pan over fire. This fire helps to melt this block of cheese. And that is exactly what happens in our body. If now, before we continue, sorry, I'm so sorry mm -hmm. to interrupt. I want to hear what you, I really can't wait to hear what you have to say. But we do have someone on the line oh, who would okay. love to speak with you, and then we'll come right back to this. Sure. Hello there. What's your name? Hello. What's your name? Hello. Hello there. Yeah, my name is Narendra Dodia. Hello, thank you very much for calling. What's your question? Yeah, I'm suffering from lower back problem and I've got gallstone. I wanted um, uh, if the Ayurvedic medicine can help me. Thank you, Narendra, for that. Yeah. Thank you. What would you say, Deepa? Of course. Now, when we look into a lower back problem, in yeah. Ayurveda, we believe that, you know, it is a vata or dryness related problem. This lower back, yeah. it can either be because of dryness in yeah. that lower area. Or, of course, very classically in Ayurveda, we also believe that people who may have a tendency towards constipation may suffer from lower back ache. Therefore, the best thing for you to do if you've got lower back ache is to drink plenty of warm water. Along with that, if you're able to have turmeric, that is turmeric, you know, the spice that we have in the kitchen, if possible, half a teaspoonful uh, mixed in warm water three times a day, that will also really help uh, with the lower backache. But most importantly, what will really, really help is to get rid of constipation. And this can be done just simply by taking a mix, mixture of, let's say, warm milk, uh, half a teaspoonful of turmeric, and half a teaspoonful of warm ghee, all mixed together, taken in the evening before bedtime, and this will really help. Pardon? Thank you so much, um, Narendra, for getting in touch. He Thank also you. mentioned that he had um, gallstones yes. as well. Gallstone, yeah. Yes, yes. And yes. also, I'm a very obese person, you know. So oh, this okay. is impacting yeah. on yeah. my whole body. Of yeah. course. Now, if you have gallstones, then once again, the herbs that will really help you are neem, turmeric, yeah. And there is okay. one typical Ayurvedic herb called as Gugul, that is G-U-G-G-U-L. All yeah. of these can be taken uh, one or three times a day, depending upon, you know, all your other medical yeah. conditions, and then it will really help you. Yeah. But just to ch confirm, he, would he need to speak to his GP yes, first before exactly, taking yeah. anything? Okay, he needs yes. to, you know, bearing in mind any other medical conditions. But yeah. even otherwise, the two safest herbs that you could take is neem and turmeric. These two are because yeah. the ones that we use at home, even in our cooking and in our foods, so they are safe and these will really be good even for gallstones. Yeah. Thank you very much, Narendra. Thanks for that question. <laughs> you know, it's, and it's interesting because these remedies are all in our homes, in our kitchens. Yes, yeah. Which is amazing. As uh, well, in Ayurveda, we do say that, you know, Ayurveda starts from your kitchen. Mm -hmm. So everything that you have in your kitchen, if you can use that, that is the best way of bringing that health balance and that kind of harmony into the body. Absolutely. Now, we do have one more caller okay. on the line for you. Hi, what's your name? Hello. Hi there, what's your name? Mrs. Gautam. Hi, thank you for calling. What's your question? I just told that lady. Go ahead. That uh, I have this bladder problem. Is there any cure for it in... Okay, so, yes. so she has a bladder problem and is yes. there any cure for it? Yeah. Now, uh, maybe she is, when you say b bladder problem, is it more to do with any kind of weak bladder? It is bladder's lining gone. Okay, fine, I understand. Now, of course, for this, the best way forward for you would be any kind of yoga practice. Now, generally, any kind of breathing exercises or even like simple seated positions will really, really help you. Because if it is weak bladder, you need that strength in your muscles, and then that is what will really help to even kind of at least help towards getting rid of the bladder problem. But you know, in this in this situation, I can't eat lots of things. You yeah, know, that is correct. Food you know? is so much limited. Yes, that is correct. It may be possible that you can't eat a lot of things, but try and concentrate more on cooling foods. Uh, foods like cumin water, so maybe half a teaspoonful of cumin in warm water. Just uh, let it steep for 10-15 minutes and drink that water two, three times a day. That will really help. Or you can even have neem, again neem in water form. That is also quite cooling, so that will also help for the bladder problem. Uh, thanks. So these are very simple, simple. home remedies, really. 
That's yeah. what I love, the simplicity. Thank you so much for that call. Thank you very much. And these are just, I love the fact that it's so basic that way. It's yeah. brilliant. Anyone could apply these things. Yeah. And it's easy and it doesn't have to cost anything. You don't have to go buy lots of products and spend lots of money. Exactly. And as I was saying, you know, it starts in your kitchen. So things that are easily available, things that you can just go just right across to the other room, you know, mix up a few things. Mm -hmm. And when you have them, you will actually see the difference that effect and it really really works so yes they're simple but very very effective now I really want to get back to the weight loss yes. but before we do we do have one more person oh, okay. who would like to speak with you hi what's your name hello hello there what's your name my name is Vinod hi Vinod thank you for calling what's your question actually I came to see Dr. Deepta about three months ago I had some white spots on my face Okay. White yes. I, my question is that I came to see doctor on about two, three months ago. Yes. I had a white spot on my face. Yes. Mm -hmm. The medication she prescribed and she asked me to take, I'm taking, is not been effective. Yeah. Uh, it may also be possible that, you know, the medic along with the medication, if there is a lot of stress, it will affect. So best is if you are able to, you know, try to reduce the stress in your life or if it is possible, to take short breaks from work or you know if you're able to take those breaks it'll really help Vinod do we have yes, yes, I'm Vinod? Listening, yes. yeah you'll just need to sorry you'll just have to turn down the volume of your TV in the background please because then you'll actually hear us in real time or there'll yeah, be a little no bit problem. of a delay. Yes, I, I turn it down, yes. <laughs> okay, good, good. Thanks, yeah. thank you. Yeah, I've been taking the medication you asked yes. me to take yes. or what you want me yes. to do, yes. but it's still it's the same and I think it's getting worse than before. I know. See, uh, one thing that I may have also suggested would have been a combination of turmeric and aloe vera gel to be applied yes. locally. Yes, that's what I'm doing it. Yes, yeah, yeah. you have been doing that. Gel, yes, and whatever other, other things you told me, yes. take fly and so on. Yes, yes. Of course, you know. See, when we look into skin-related conditions, sometimes it takes a bit longer for yes. you know anyone to see that kind of improvement. And sometimes right. you may see that you know sometimes the condition may appear to go a little bit worse before it actually okay. starts improving. Mm -hmm. One All other right, thing yes. that I could also suggest, of course, because you have come to me for a consultation is yep. like you know something called as ayurvedic purgation with castor oil mm -hmm. if you want you know uh, you could go to an ayurvedic practitioner closer to you to do that so what right. they would do is they would just need to take you know check uh, your blood pressure and everything and then thereafter they will suggest how to take castor oil and that yes, really uh, my gp has just taken my blood pressure a couple of days ago mm -hmm. and it was fine okay it was normal yes yes so you can do what is called as castor oil purgation and that will also really help to get rid of any kind of skin related, you know, spotting, age spotting or any such conditions. Only, only the castor oil or you, knew, you want me to mix something with the castor oil? Uh, no, uh, the thing is there is a way of taking the castor oil. So it mm -hmm. would be best that, you know, if you're able to once again go to, your, if you've got an Ayurvedic uh, practitioner closer to you or if you want you can come and visit me again. Wonderful. Okay, and Vinod, please you. also do yeah. get in touch with us and let us know how that treatment goes. We'd love to hear how these treatments are benefiting yeah, people. Yeah, actually, I, I, Thank I, I, you. I was supposed to phone you back because yeah. you asked me to contact you after yes. two, three weeks. But yes. then I had to go to India. That's why of I couldn't course. get hold of you. I understand. Yeah. Thank you very much, Vinod. No Wonderful Thank to speak you with you. Thank advice. you. Thank you. So now, coming to our weight loss, what things can we do to help us lose weight? Obviously, depending on our yes, constitutions. Yeah. So as I was saying earlier, you know, it is that to aim to just melt the cheese, yes. you know, to get rid of it from the body. And, and that cheese represents the toxins, toxins in the body, yes. And, you know, the excess fat also, you know, all together. Mm -hmm. And in Ayurveda, for anything, we talk about five different approaches to get rid of any problem. Mm -hmm. And these are foods, herbs, massages, yoga, and lifestyle. So now when it comes to foods, one of the best things that a person can do is just take some grated ginger, uh, squeeze some lemon juice, add a bit of honey, very little bit of salt to it, and it's like an Indian chutney. And then to have like half a teaspoonful of this, maybe 15-20 minutes before meals. This really helps to stimulate the digestive fire, and once that happens, that means it will also start melting the cheese or the fat from the body. Wonderful. Now before we go into more, we do have another caller on the line okay. for you. Hi, you. what's your name? Hello, what's your name? Uh, my name is Sandeep. Hi Sandeep, thank you for calling. What's your question? My question is, what is Ayurveda medicine available for anxiety and chronic fatigue? Good question. But thank you for that question. What would you suggest, yes. Uh First of all, for anxiety, the best way forward in Ayurveda are Ayurvedic whole body massages. 
those will really really help to get rid of that anxiety that nervousness that is one thing and the other thing that you could also do at home is every day let's say two or three times to make up a, a small mixture of let's say um, cumin then maybe some amount of turmeric in it then along with that you can add fennel seeds and it's like a herbal tea that you can make at home and to have that two three times a day and it really helps to calm down the heart and also helps to like you know regulate the blood pressure so that is one thing for anxiety now when it comes to chronic fatigue or even if it's chronic fatigue syndrome in ayurveda we believe that it is a result of drug syndrome that is you know chronic fatigue so we believe that it is a uh, kind of a dry heat related problem therefore the aim is to get rid of the dryness and the excess heat from the body and once again to get rid of this kind of chronic fatigue quality from the body once again the best remedy is massages any kind of massages but in ayurveda we specifically talk about foot massages because when we do foot massages we believe that it helps to get rid of heat from the body but also dryness so foot massages with either ghee or clarified butter or sesame seed oil will really really help to bring back that strength and that energy also into the body and along with that one other thing that you can also do is to drink ginger lemon tea two three times a day and the best way of making that will be like grated fresh ginger and just squeeze some lemon uh, along with this ginger into hot water and then have this two three times a day so these two should really help for chronic fatigue too and it was wonderful because that can also then help with weight loss too because yes. you're digesting properly. Shamji, yes. thank you so much for giving us a call and asking that question. It's, it's wonderful. It's, this seems like a universal remedy. It seems like something that can address many ailments, in fact. Yes, that's right. Wonderful. Yeah. So we were looking at the five areas that mm. Ayurveda approaches. Now, what's one thing that you could suggest to each different type of constitution for weight loss? Okay, fine. See, now when we talk about weight gain for Vata personalities, they gain weight because either they may be going through a phase of depression or that kind of fear or anxiety. So out of that anxiety, they tend to eat a lot mm -hmm. and therefore gain weight. Now in Ayurveda, we say that the reason why they're gaining weight is because they have stopped looking after themselves. Therefore, the best thing is for them to just take short breaks, you know, just look after themselves either in terms of physical exercises mm. or best way is once again oil massages mm. because there's dryness in the body the body is not easily letting go of the fat so when you apply some oil you know it helps to soothe down the system and therefore the body also will help to get rid of the fat very easily okay now before we go on to the next constitution we have one more caller on the okay. line hi what's your name hello hi what's your name hi my name's Farosa. hi Farosa. thank you for calling what's your question right um, what I wanted to know is I suffer from underactive thyroid and I just wanted to know it's really difficult to lose weight with underactive thyroid and what we would propose. Okay, yes. First of all, may I know if you are on any kind of medication at all? Yes, I'm on thyroxine um, 175. Okay, and that is the only medication that you're on at the moment? Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Of course, now looking into some very general tips, you know, things that you can do at home in terms yeah. of uh, approaching the underactive problem. First mm -hmm. of all, to drink plenty of warm water during the day. And warm water. Yes. Yeah. One very, very important thing for people suffering from underactive thyroid is to avoid certain faulty food combinations. That is what we call it in Ayurveda. That means two different foods which should not be eaten together. And the main okay. such faulty food combination that you should try and avoid, first of all, are dairy and fruit. So anything like, you know, fruit and yogurt or strawberry yogurt, blueberry yogurt, best is to avoid that because that causes okay. more tiredness and lethargy in the body. The okay. second important combination to avoid is once again meat and dairy. So if you are eating chicken or fish or anything like that, best is not to have it with dairy. So this, like avoiding faulty food combination itself will help a lot to get rid of yeah. the tiredness from the body and it will also help towards weight loss. Faroza, thank right, you so very much. you can much eat meat on its own, not with dairy. Yes, you yeah, saying? you can have it yeah. on its own, but please don't combine it with dairy. Okay. Thank you very much, Faroza. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I do believe we have another caller on the line for okay. you. Very popular this evening, Deepa. <laughs> <laughs> do we have our other caller with us? Hello? Hi. Hi, what's your name? Uh, my name is Bertha. Hi, thank you for calling. What's your question? 
My question was about and the fact that thyroid, but I think you've uh, answered that question already to mm -hmm. the last caller. So the other question I would uh, like to ask is, uh, how can Ayurveda help for patients suffering from uh, psoriasis? Yeah. Now, when we look into psoriasis, we believe that it is a pitta or fire-related problem. And we believe yeah. very strongly in Ayurveda that, you know, sometimes when there are certain toxins in the body, then these toxins will go directly to the skin. You may see that people who may suffer from psoriasis may most probably suffer from constipation too. So therefore, first of all, it is very important to get rid of constipation. That itself will help to, help to clear up the skin. But other than that, you will be amazed how much turmeric helps with psoriasis as an imbalance. And therefore, if you are able to take turmeric, neem, there is a very common Ayurvedic, like in a spice or herb, herb if you want to call it, called as trifala. So trifla, neem, and turmeric. Either you can put it into your cooking or just use it as a spice mix over salads. That will also help you a lot. Baraka, thank you very much for calling and asking that question. Thank you. Now, quick tip for kapha types to lose weight. Okay, yeah. See, because kapha is water and earth, that means there is a slow movement in the body. Mm -hmm. So the aim is to quicken that movement. Of course, now Ayurveda very simply puts it down as if there is a kapha-related weight gain, the best way forward is fasting once a week. Okay, yes. You know, so that's very simple. Now, again, when we say fasting, it doesn't mean that they have to just stop eating food for the day. That is not correct because that means you're not giving the body that fuel. Yes. Therefore, they should have one big meal if they want, you know, around lunchtime. Okay. And even otherwise, Ayurveda says lunchtime meal is the best because just the way the sun is on top of your head and therefore it's very strong. Likewise, your digestive fire is also very strong. So whatever you eat at lunchtime, it'll quickly digest it and turn them into nutrients rather than turning them into toxins. Beautiful. Now we have one more call for oh, you. Okay. Hi, what's your name? Hi, it's Ramesh. Hi, Ramesh. Thank you for calling. What would you like to ask? Uh, I just want some information regarding, um, like, Ayurvedic medicine for hay fever. The hay fever? Yes. Yeah. Of course. Now, when we look into hay fever in Ayurveda, we look at it also as a kind of an allergy. May I quickly ask, when you say hay fever, do you have mostly, like, you know, eye-related symptoms like burning, itching, or is it more throat-related symptoms, or is it more like, you know, runny nose? Is there any specific symptom it's that bothers you the most? and eyes. It is the it's eyes. They everything, but mainly throat and eyes, yeah. It is the eyes, the throat and eyes. Okay, fine. You will see that, of course, in Ayurveda, there's one particular, if you want to call it herb, but it is a plant. You may have heard of mm -hmm. holy parcel or tulsi. Oh, yeah. So that is a plant or that is one herb that will really help mm -hmm. to get rid of the hay fever kind of symptoms. And along with that, if you do have eye-related uh, symptoms, then best thing for you to do is just take some rose water on eye pads and apply them on the eyes for maybe 10, 15 minutes. And it will really help to get rid of, you know, the symptoms of burning, itching or watering of the eyes too. Thank you so much, Ramesh, for that call. I'm so sorry, we've, we've, our time is coming to an end. Oh, so yeah. <laughs> we've tried to fit as many calls as we can, but I love of your tip course. on rose water because I believe that's also very good for skin and for having glowing, beautiful skin. Is that right? Yes, that's right. Wonderful. Um, I wish I could let you talk more regards to love what you're saying, but we have to close. But Deepa, thank you for joining us. Your no, wisdom has been amazing. I know we have many more people who would love to speak with you, but we will get their answers from you to them as well. But thank you very much for joining us this and evening. And thanks a lot for having me on the show. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you. Thank and you. thank you to all of our viewers for joining us. And in summary, really, for what we're taking away from today's show is the ginger lemon tea after every meal can help with weight loss. Turmeric is incredibly good for anti-aging and rose water is amazing for fantastic skin care for youthful glowing skin. Now if you have any further questions and want to get in touch, you can email us zcompanion at ztv.co.uk. Thank you so much for joining us.